So the next thing now are the darks that show up the sparkles. So here we go. The sparkles are dry. Now what we do is we just very, very roughly brush across the sparkles. We don't have to completely cover them. We can leave a few whites and what that will tend to do is create even more complexity. Very complex texture, but it will do it automatically. Remember, you've already got the texture of the masking. Now you're effectively adding another texture over it, which is the dark water surrounding the sparkles. And these whites here, these are just a few extra whites now left out simply by not painting every inch of the paper. We won't paint the edge of the waterfall yet. We'll come back to that once we've dried off the, the falls themselves. Now the few simple distant streaks of colour. Again, this is the ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Just want to make that slightly bluer. As you can see, I've got several variations of it all ready to use from the palette. Now, when we get into this main central area of brightness, I'm switching to burnt sienna. That's a warm color and it just represents some of the heat from the reflected sun. So we just dash a little bit of that in. Now I've just got to leave it to dry and that will enable me to put in the horizon. Now again, a little bit of burnt sienna and I'm going to brush just burnt sienna on its own into this middle area, just there, very loosely and roughly. And then we'll add some of the dark colour. This time it's biased toward brown. So we've just got a feeling of a little bit of sunlight catching on that distant horizon. And now moving away, we shift toward the dark again. Very carefully define the horizon. There we go. And just uh, using the color we've prepared, put in these distant trees. Don't put in every detail, there's really no need. So we've just got the feeling that there's some light in that central area. Now we get the dark, brush in a few little rocks or I suppose they're islands, little knolls of land sticking up over the rapids, a few little darks. And you can see the value of having plenty of colour mixed prior to starting the painting. The main battle isn't on the paper, it's actually on the palette, mixing plenty of colour before you start. Here's a little trick to see if something's dry. Just touch it with a pencil. If it's not dry, you won't be able to draw on it. And I can just feel that that's dry using the tip of the pencil. So now we'll finish off the edge of the waterfall. Need a slightly smaller brush for this. Bluish black now. Fine, thin lines as the water rushes toward the edge. I don't need to paint all the edge, just leave a few whites here and there. But can you see we just model the drop, the drop off where it goes over and this intense blackness. And now we can just finish off some of these dark accents. This is a painting about light and shade. Very nearly complete now. So we just finish off with a few extra accents of dark just to bring it to completion. Just quick scuff marks. Let the brush speak. 
Don't worry about painting it, painting it out literally, just quick brush marks and let the brush do the work. So now is there anything else I can do? Well, I'm going to use some of my sky colour now, the very pale grey blue, just to complete a few extra highlights of light tone on the edge of the waterfall, just so that it looks natural. And there we go. Now we'll just leave it to dry and then we'll remove the masking fluid. Now all I need to do is take off the masking fluid and add a few little accents to the paper and it'll be complete. So here we go. Make sure my hands are clean, dry, and we rub the masking fluid off. Using a dry brush now just to clear off the rest of these pieces of masking fluid. So all I need to do now are a couple of finishing touches. We get a brush with a lot of paint on it, very, very strong, and we make these kinds of marks. You see that? Across the waterfall. Dense, dry brush, just to reinstate some colour where we need it. Just a little bit, not too much. We don't want to ruin the effect. And then a little few accents just in the distance. Get a clean brush. And I'm going to just put some little highlights of burnt sienna into the distance. And having done that, go back with a little little more dark. And all of these darks accentuate the lights and really enhance them. So finally, I just remove the masking tape and we're left with a completed image. And there we are, a complete image of a raging waterfall. Now available on DVD. Try these techniques yourself at home whenever you wish. The extended version of today's workshop is now available to order on DVD from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.